we're combing through the aisles of Vulcan Video, an independent video store here in Austin, Texas, to find the most obscure, the strangest, and the overlooked gems of yesterday. This is the Vulcan Vault. Welcome to the Vulcan Vault. We got a great one for you today. Today we got Zach Carlson. He is one of the guys behind uh, one of the great uh, movie labels of all time, uh, Bleeding Skull. Uh, you guys are doing some awesome work uh, digging up rarities and, and little scene uh, horror films from the 80s. Thank you very much for that. Uh, Zach, what have you picked out for us today? Well, today I went with a movie that I love so much that it makes me emotional. Uh, this is Tourist Trap, which was written and directed by a guy named David Schmoller in 1979. And even though it's from that decade, that 70s decade filled with beige colors and divorce and sweat and movies, it really feels like this incredible template for 80s horror, for so much that would happen afterwards. And uh, really, I mean, I guess it's hard to compare it to anything that came before it besides possibly Texas Chainsaw Massacre, because it has kind of attractive young people in a rural situation that goes very poorly for them. But beyond that, it is completely original and it is completely unique. And that is what I love about movies. That's what I love about movies or books or food or humans or anything is that you have to be just like ugly and real and true and unique. And that is what this movie is. Uh, and so the people that I want to give a lot of praise to for this movie primarily, there's two. One is an actor and one is the writer director uh, whose name is David Schmoller who is just like was coming out of nowhere he had never made a feature before and he just walked into an office and he said here's what i got there's a bunch of teenagers they go to the middle of nowhere and there is a telekinetic hillbilly that causes some trouble it's me. Well, i don't know man. and somehow somebody said yes let's make that movie and we'll get to that in a minute but so what he was able to do is just go into his imagination to a place where nobody had ever gone and make this movie that has this thing I just described. I mean, you know, basically hillbilly telekinesis, which I know everybody's a massive fan of. I know that Twitter is just always going crazy over hillbilly telekinesis. Well, here's your movie to watch, modern day human fans of the world. Um, but he made this movie that has no explanation. It doesn't feel like it needs to pander to the viewer. It doesn't need to say, okay, well, here's why he's a hillbilly, and here's what made him telekinetic, which is just such a problem now. I think in storytelling, everything is so overexplained. But nobody ever goes into a horror film looking for a logical explanation. They go in looking for atmosphere, and looking for ideas and actual scares, and this movie seriously delivers all of those things. It has such bizarre, and uncomfortable and incredible imagery. It has really like the, one of the best horror characters ever, who's a guy named Davy Slauson, who's a very mysterious figure through the movie. I thought I'd better come down and warn you. You all best leave before it gets dark. And one of the reasons that the film is also very great and also really unusual is that you have this actor Chuck Connors who kind of plays the older man who's out there in the middle of the woods and kind of knows what's going on and Chuck Connors was a major actor he was like a huge studio actor uh, who had done stuff from you know television he was the rifle man and he was kind of like the the most ice cold of all the old TV cowboys and had this cool trick he would do with his rifle and then he went on to do you know like big budget movie stuff he's you'll, you'll recognize him for sure he was in movies like um, Soylent Green, he was the crazy hit man, the Mad Bomber. He did all kinds of stuff uh, that kind of got him in the public eye. And then here he comes in this truly bizarre independent horror film, and he gives such an amazing, unbelievable, like actually awe-inspiring performance. I'd like some more crackers, please. That's what I said. Yes, the crackers are very good. Are the crackers good? And I don't want to go into too much because like, it's really great to just let the movie unfold. But when you see Chuck Connors and you see, I mean, his head is shaped like, like, a, like a brick rectangle. And he just comes in and you're like, there walks a true man. And he is just down for everything this movie throws out, which is a lot. And he gives such a true, like sincere, unbelievable performance. Talk to me. Tell me you love me. 
tell me you love me. Tell me. Oh boy, do I love it. I'm gonna go kiss a picture of Chuck Connors. <laughs> and um, so David Schmoller, the writer director, was fortunate enough to work with this professional guy on his first film. And there's, a lot, you know, there's other people you'll recognize, like Tanya Roberts from Beastmaster is in it. Everybody does this great job, but it's really the ideas of the movie that are the star. And uh, there's really nothing else like it. And people since then have, I think, tried to come up with ideas that were similar. Like uh, Brian Connolly, who also does some of these with you, uh, said that the House of Wax remake starring Paris Hilton was actually a, more of a ripoff of Tourist Trap than of House of Wax. So people have tried to touch on this, but the fact that Tourist Trap came out in 1979 and was able to just thrust out so many unseen and unimagined ideas like is really what makes it, to me, the most underappreciated horror film of the le last half of the 20th century. Oh, you are so pretty. It's a shame you have to die. Uh, the other person that I cannot not mention that's involved in this movie was its producer, a guy named Charles Band, uh, who went on to make a reputation for himself, a very roguish one, uh, and also he started you know, Full Moon Entertainment and basically homogenized straight-to-video horror for the 90s and made it all dumb. Uh, th there's a lot of movies that you'll see that you'll remember if you went into Hollywood Video in 1996 and on the new release wall there'd be like 15 different horror movies about little tiny monster dudes that were just kind of like fourth generation puppet master and knockoffs. <laughs> this was Charles Band's Empire. I figured out one time he made 83 different horror movies <laughs> about little monsters that are gonna bite your foot. <laughs> And he's just such a like a just goofball in the horror industry, but he's managed to stay there for you know 40 years. So I guess you know crime pays. <laughs> but I bring him up also because he recently uh, released a Blu-ray of Tourist Trap, which Charles Band re-edited and removed 12 minutes of footage of without the consent of writer-director David Schmoller. Please, Mr. Schlafen, I won't tell anybody. And you'll have to join the others. So, as I often say anyway, don't bother with the Blu-ray. Go ahead and watch Tourist Trap on DVD, on VHS, on 35mm, and get the real story, the real true power of hillbilly telekinesis can be yours. Just don't watch it on Blu-ray. Who needs it? <laughs> anyway, Tourist Trap. Boy, is that movie good. Oh, boy, is it good. Damn! Yeah! Wait, wait, in your opinion... Why, why do you think this is so underappreciated? I think there's a couple of reasons why people haven't truly absorbed and, and discovered Tourist Trap, like, at large. You know, there's movies like Sleepaway Camp, also independent. Everyone knows about it. Everyone knows how great it is, and it's great. But Tourist Trap, I think, didn't really grab the public's, you know, love and, and affection and attention uh, like that movie because, well, it's rated PG. And that's something that we just need to get out in the open uh, Tourist Trap is a PG horror film, but I guarantee that's not because of any lack of ice-cold terror. I think it's just the fact that it isn't gory, it isn't nudie, it's just great, and, you know, being great doesn't make you rated R. I think there's a lot of other PG-rated horror films that we should just talk about here so we can make sure that you understand that Tourist Trap does deliver. Jaws was rated PG, in which you see Robert Shaw be completely, you know, perforated by a giant shark. That's a PG movie. Uh, the Baby is a horror film that's also rated PG, in which you see a 30-year-old man breastfeed off a teenage girl in the opening scene. And David Manzi as Baby, rated PG. PG used to be wild. It used to stand for pretty great. So <laughs> that's what this movie is. Rated pretty great. So people who have always assumed that Tourist Trap is just some like TV caliber horror experience. You're all wet. Here's the truth. This movie is top notch. Dun, dun, you're the, dun, dun, you're the, uh, <laughs> so check it out and I promise you that it's infinitely more terrifying than anything that Eli Roth has ever churned out <laughs> of his seven holes. Wow, that's some high praise. All right, so the pick of the day, Tourist Trap. Hey, you have a copy right here on the floor. Hey! Zach, thanks so much, man. You I really bet. appreciate it. I love America! <laughs> Vote for Bush!
That's 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 <laughs> creepy. I wow. Now. Oh. <laughs> 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 <laughs>